me right out of that sunset on your color TV screen. Out for all that I can get, if you know what I mean, y'all. Women to the left of me, women to the right. Ain't got no gun, ain't got no knife. Don't you start no Hello and welcome to Making History. On today's episode, we will be talking about Ned Kelly and his gang. Is he a national hero or a national disgrace? Since the beginning of time, some 15 years ago, historians like these have been arguing about the same point. Stop it, you lot! Who is the real Ned Kelly? What is the real story? To find out, we're going to go back in time, time, time. Over to you, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Welcome to the 19th century. Older, little older, too old, just right. Ned Kelly was born in 1854 and was one of eight children. And here he is, the future outlaw and bush ranger. I'm Ned Kelly, who the heck are you? The family was very poor and often in trouble with the police. To make matters worse, when he was only 12, Ned's father kicked the bucket. Ned was now head of the family, and by the time he was 14, he was already in trouble for hitting a man. <laughs> and stealing a horse. The young Ned, however, was not all bad. One day when he was walking to school, a young boy fell in the river. Ned happened to be passing by and rescued him. The parents of the young lad praised Ned and gave him a specially made green sash. Ned was very proud of his sash and wore it on special occasions. After only being a student for two years, Ned left school and took up apprenticeship to Harry Power, a bushranger. Harry Power wasn't a very impressive bushranger, however. He was short, bad tempered, and he had trouble with his bowels. It's what happened next, however, that really started the trouble. And like a lot of history, it's really hard to tell what really happened. Here I am at the Kelly household. In a minute, a policeman will arrive to arrest Ned's brother Dan for horse stealing. Ah, here, right on time. If you believe the Kellys, then the policeman insulted Ned's sister. Ha ha, you got big ears and it's not funny. A fight broke out during which the policeman's gun accidentally fired and shot him in the wrist. Oh, the pain, the pain! I'm going to give watch again! Don't worry, children. This is just a reenactment. We don't use real bullets. Why? This blood? It's just tomato sauce. Whichever way you look at it, one thing was clear. Ned and Dan were in trouble, so they headed for the bush to hide from the police. Not that kind of bush, you idiots. That's better. Now, the police weren't going to give up that easily. They offered a reward for their capture and arrested Ned's mother for attempted murder. She was sentenced to three years jail. This made Ned very angry. This made Ned very angry. This made Ned very... That's better. Ned and Dan were now joined by two friends that he met in jail. Steve Hart and Joe Byrne. They were now the Kelly Gang. The gang managed to hide out in the Wombat Mountains for a few months, but in October they came across a party of four policemen at Stringy Bark Creek. The policemen drew their guns, and so did the bushrangers. <laughs> Three of the policemen were shot dead, but one escaped. The Kelly gang were now outlaws and wanted for murder. A reward of £2,000 was put up for each member of the gang, dead or alive. Two months later, they were at it again, this time holding up the bank in Uroa. This was just the beginning. Here we are in Jerilderie. Late last night, the Kelly gang rode into town, took the local police by surprise and locked them up in their own cells. Now they've got the police uniforms on and are herding all of the townspeople into the Royal Hotel. 
Hey, you can't do this to me. I'm the historian. Who's going to tell the story now? I am. Meanwhile, Ned and Joe Byrne robbed the local bank and burnt all the mortgages, so there was no evidence of how much money people owed the bank. Yet again, the gang headed for the bush. They managed to hide from the police for more than a year. By robbing banks and making the police look silly, the Kelly gang were becoming heroes to many people, especially the poor. In response, the police doubled the reward to £4,000. That was a lot of money and it was very tempting, especially for one man named Aaron Sherritt, an old friend of the Kelly gang. He began to give police information about where the Kelly gang were hiding. The gang couldn't work out how the police knew where they were and started to grow suspicious. They set a trap by telling the sheriff that they were going to a certain place. When the police turned up, the gang knew that only Sheriff could have told them. It was time for an old fashioned shootout. <laughs> Ned had a secret weapon. He had read a book about knights in shining armor and decided to come up with his own. The Kelly gang knew that if they killed Aaron Sherritt, dozens of police would be sent to find them. So they deliberately lure police to the small town of Glen Rowan, where they would wait for a trainload of police to arrive from Melbourne. The gang would tear up the train track just out of town so that as the train approached, it would derail, killing many of the police on board. But first, Aaron Sherritt needed to be taken care of. Joe and Dan knocked on his door, then shot him in the head. children this is just a reenactment we don't use real bullets and this blood here is just tomato sauce <coughs> meanwhile Ned and Steve had forced some railway workers to tear up the truck and rounded all the people uh, of the oh. town into Jones's hotel <laughs> inside the gang threw a party as they waited for the train from Melbourne to arrive a school teacher in the hotel begged Ned to let him and his family go home. Ned agreed as long as the teacher promised not to go for help. It was a big mistake. The school teacher headed for the train tracks and somehow managed to stop the train before it reached the broken rail. Eventually the train pulled into the station and the siege of Glenroan was about to begin. Yes, well, good evening, viewers, and welcome to The Big Game. I'm Stan Lieberman. And I'm Brock Handel. Tonight, we're coming to you live from outside the Glen Rowan Hotel, where two teams are preparing to do battle. Yes, Brock, this showdown has been years in the making, and it's certainly a case of winner takes all. We're going to cross live now to the hotel, where I believe Judy has gang founder and team captain Ned Kelly. What's the feeling amongst the players down there, Judy? 
Thanks, Dan. Well, things are very tense here. How are you feeling, Ned? I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. Those police are finally going to get what's coming to them. Yeah! We'll have to wait and see. He's certainly up against a tough opposition. As we look now, we can see that the hotel is beginning to be surrounded. But what's this? It looks like Kelly is making the first move. Yes, that's Kelly all right, wearing some kind of armour and all guns blazing. Let's look at the replay. Ned comes out the door and it's one, two, three, then bang! He cops one shot to the arm and then another to the leg. Here comes more police and the place is completely surrounded. We'll fight the of I can't see the gang holding out much longer against such attacking play. The sun is about to come up and something extraordinary is about to happen. The wounded and injured Ned is about to emerge for one last hurrah. With one good arm, he staggers from the bush behind the hotel. Bullets bounce off his iron chest until finally a volley of shots to the legs causes Ned to crash the ground. Severely injured but still alive, he is captured. Don't worry children, this is just a reenactment. We don't use real bullets. <coughs> Here I am with Ned Kelly for the last laugh time. What's this thing? Oh, it's a coat hanger. What's it for? Ned Kelly was found guilty for the murders of the policeman at Stringy Bark Creek and was hung in the Melbourne jail. Oh well, such is life. And to this day, there remains great controversy over whether or not Ned Kelly was a national hero or a shameful murderer and criminal. What do you think?